In an undisclosed location in northeastern Ukraine, two controversial militant groups, the Legion of Freedom for Russia and the Russian Volunteer Corps, gathered for a photo op with journalists. The area is known for Ukrainian military training and remains unnamed. Standing around a Soviet air armored vehicle they claim to have taken from Russian border troops. These individuals, fully armed and some masked, proudly waved their respective flags. One of the men granted permission to speak was Denis Kapustin, the notorious leader of the Russian Volunteer Corps. Dressed entirely in black, Kapustin, a Russian passport holder, has gained influence in the far-right extremist scene, particularly due to his involvement with the White Rex neo-Nazi clothing brand. According to reports from Spiegel, WDR, NDR, and SZ, White Rex has professionalized the neo-Nazi combat sports scene across Europe. Kapustin proudly donned a black baseball cap featuring the brand's logo. Robert Claus, an expert on right-wing extremism, recently referred to Kapustin as a key figure in militant neo-Nazism at the European level. During the press event in northeastern Ukraine, Kapustin expressed his right-wing conservative views, stating, I am quite traditionally oriented, right conservative. I don't understand why that is considered an insult in today's world. Originally from Moscow, Kapustin moved to Germany in the early 2000s before returning to Russia and ultimately settling in Ukraine several years ago. Assertive and almost imperious, he directed the media surrounding him. Kapustin claimed crossing the border into the Bielgorod region alone was a success. According to him, they had spent 24 hours there, resulting in two fatalities and 10 injuries contrasting the Russian propaganda's claim of 70 casualties. While the Russian Volunteer Corps was established in August 2022, some members have been active against Putin's Russia since the start of the conflict in Donbas in 2014. Kapustin asserted that the Ukrainian army supports them, providing gasoline, medicine, information, food, and even medical care for the wounded. When asked about weapons by one of the journalists, Kapustin responded enigmatically, stating, the weapons are ours if we obtain them on Ukrainian soil. Are they Ukrainian weapons or ours? Hard to say. Kapustin emphasized that all activities within Ukraine's borders were coordinated with the Ukrainian military, preventing Russians from running through Ukraine armed with machine guns. However, he added that everything they do beyond the border is decided independently. The organizers then decided to introduce Caesar, the vice commander of the Legion of Freedom for Russia. Little is publicly known about this group, except that it consists of nationalists and former Russian army personnel. Similarly, limited information is available about Maximilian Andronikov, also known as Caesar. According to independent Russian media, he has a nationalist background and aims to overthrow the Putin regime. Andronikov referred to the Russian attack on Ukraine as a tragedy. Dressed in camouflage uniform with a ponytail, he described his group as liberators, peace-loving concerned Russian citizens, and liberators of our homeland. We defend Ukraine and have fought in and around Bakhmut for several months. Above all, we want to protect Ukraine from the aggression of our country. Died once all territories are liberated, Andronikov expressed a serious intention to liberate Russia. However, the details provided were vague, leaving many questions unanswered. The operation is ongoing, with further actions planned, as both Andronikov and Kapustin stated. Officially, the Ukrainian government denied any involvement in the Bielgorod region operation, asserting that no Ukrainian soldiers were part of the endeavor.